Why, I man, that's as good as it's gonna get. <laughs> that it's was mint. terrible. That was awful. Wasn't it? <laughs> good afternoon, everybody. Mark here. Uh, welcome to uh, my uh, show, workshop, fast, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm standing in for Wayne's Friday lunchtime today, also because I didn't do a live earlier in the week because I was otherwise occupied. So I have got, you already know he's here, in the background, <laughs> helping me out, Jamie, uh, Pete from Twisted Trees, and Wayne Wood Turner. They're going to be helping me out today. Thanks, guys. So um, what am I turning? Right. This lump. It's a piece of what we think is ash. It's a bit of brown heart ash. It's also got a bit of spalting in it. It's very green. Um, You're full screen on that, Mark. Yeah, sorry. Felled about eight months ago, nine months ago, and it's been sitting outside. And I'm going to turn it into a rough shape of a vase and do a bit of hollowing today. Um, but before I do that, Mr. Page sent Whatever. me a parcel this week. If anybody's ever received a parcel from Jamie, it's an experience. He very kindly sent me some fantastic pen blanks. Very much appreciated. And he also, dear of him, sent me an Axminster ex um, concentric, eccentric? Eccentric. Mm -hmm. eccentric. Eccentric, yeah. Spiraling. If you say off center, it's easier. Off center, Chuck. <laughs> yeah. Really appreciate it. Thank you ever so much, Jamie. It's very kind of you. Um, the only thing I didn't really appreciate was he addressed it to Sir Mark Fluffy Beckett Esquire. Sir Mark Fluffy Beckett Esquire repeat. And then in the special notes for the postman, he said, Ask Mark about his YouTube channel. It makes him feel special. <laughs> I can't ever, I can't ever go and see my postman ever again because it's just too embarrassing. Thanks for that, Jamie. Thanks a lot. Yeah, you, Thank you. tell you the You're truth, welcome. Mark. Tell you the truth, Mark. You probably shouldn't have mentioned that because everybody in the chat is going to start calling you some yeah. Mark fluffy jacket. <laughs> I don't care if you yeah. call me it in the chat. It's my bloody postman. <laughs> right. So, I'm going to be wearing my Where face is? shield for most of this. Um, is it fluffy? Stop. It is fluffy. Yes. And my new smock is fluffy as well. It's not actually it's quite stiff. And, but uh, I'm going to be wearing the face shield because this is, it's it's still got some bark on that I couldn't scrape off. It's all out of shape until I get it round. Um, full protection. So I'm just going to change my headset over. Robert Kringspore Abrasives has put, did you know you can send a box of bees through the post? Just putting it out there. Yeah, don't send me bees, I'm allergic. <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. Think of the bees Blade. work, so. Blade spinning at 638. I'm using a half inch custom made uh, bowl gouge. <clears throat> using a bowl gouge because there's branches and inclusions on this piece. Lucy says she frequently takes beer deliveries, Rob. That explains a lot. Can you read it? Do you want me to read it out or are you going to do it? I got it. Oh, mate. And we have uh, Michael McEwen, Lucy Bundy Rowe, Gary Grass, Chris Dog, down from Australia, Norman Greenwell, Mark and Douglas, Rob from Copper Hours Returning, Rob from Kingsport.
Stephen Woodfield. Les. And I think that's it. Well, yeah. we've got the conversation. There's 30 watching. Did you say Good Les, afternoon, everybody. Yeah, Les. Les, to answer your email, yes, next Wednesday, still okay. He's the uh, defence organiser of the club I'm demo with that next week. <clears throat> the referee just come in and he said, good afternoon, Fluffy. <laughs> well, sweetie, bye. <laughs> Told you. Yeah. And the wood turner with Barry's just come in. How you doing? And give it to you, he says, I am just up to get this round. You get it turned round if you went faster, Mark. Speed is my friend, is it? Yep. It is. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Stephen, Mark is um, going to be doing a vase. Uh, is going to turn the outside and hollow part of the inside because this wood is still quite wet. So he's just doing a rough turn in today. What's funny is it sounds like there's a bee hidden box uh, face shield. How do you know there isn't? Very true. Very um, true. To Todd at Glen Cove has just come in as well. And Paul Hello, as well. Todd. Paul Hoyden. Hello, Paul. Hi, Todd. Hi, Paul. That's up to 800 now. And Brent just come in as well. How you doing? Are you taking this all the way down to get rid of the inclusions, Mark, or are you going to leave them there? I'm going to have a look at it in a minute, see what they like. Uh, I think I might take him out because that's going to be the top this is going to be the bottom and um, fat bit of the top thin bit of the bottom yeah. no, actually I might just leave a couple I might leave that one yeah leave them that with that wheel get, certainly with that one you'll probably get a nice void on that one yeah. Yeah, if you're going um, fat bit at the top, you might want to reverse it so you get more more space to work. I want to square this end off and uh, put the tenon on it. Yeah, That's I going to be the top. You might do it the other way around because the void will then be at the bottom rather than at the top. Mm, but no, because the bottom's going to be thin. So I'd lose the void. So that's Not gonna the be the... Bit, yeah. 
That's going to be the top, isn't it? Because they didn't show people the shape. That's going to be the shape. So fat bit at the top, thin bit at the bottom. So they put the tenon on, then I'll turn it round. Gary said, uh, include the inclusions or is it inclusive? Inconclusive, sorry. Turner's just come in. Hi, Jeffrey. I've been for a while. Out of interest, Matt, what drive have you got on that? Two step, two um, there's crown drives. Yeah, what size? 25 mil. And I did drill, I drilled the holes in about 10 mil deep. So this thing is, this may can't come off. Just reducing the diameter a bit so that when I do it, <coughs> square off the end with the beading tool to form the tenon, it's not uh, got so much work to do. Take one more pass with this gouge and I'll switch gouges. Mark Whittington's asking, do you find the bark does the gouge quickly? I always feel the need to keep going back to the grinder while roughing out with the bark on. Yeah, I think it does. The bark probably contains quite a bit of silica in the form of grit or whatever. It's oil. Not knocking it off, looking anything. That's how I did that one. Next one. And Ruby's just come in. Hiya, Ruby. Hello, Ruby. Hello, Ruby. Hi, Ruby. <coughs> Don't watch the first few cuts. Ruby, you'll be turning them off again. And Ben's just come in as well. Afternoon, Ben. you can all hear is uh, Mark's uh, mask. Yeah, because I'm wearing the... Uh... Face shield. Safety first, people. Safety first.
Roger Kent just Roger popped in to say here. hello. He can't stay, but he'll watch it later. How are you doing? Now, what I'll do when I do is just. I just got away with that. Are you using the deep gri grip of jaws on that, Mark? Yeah. Ben said he can't wear his respirator because the fan noise drives him insane. Yeah, it looks like that's already worked. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was going to comment, it doesn't need much petrol in, does it? Not far to go. Uh, where's my soul? Thanks. And Robert Hodges just come in. And so his Enchanted Wood Designs. Is that old Or is there another one? Yeah, it's hard Podge. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. What? <laughs> what about Fluffy? Oh, Alright, I won't. <laughs> Don't mention Mark Fluffy. Esquire. 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 Repeat. Repeat. <laughs> right back you are, Jamie. He says, whoops, wrong account. Right. And Hodgepodge just said, whoops, wrong account. He's changed accounts now. So Stephen the Wood Dude has said it's the 3rd of February 23, and I'm also roughing out of ours. This day should become National Roughing Out Day. Yeah. So what I'm doing here is, before I tighten it up in the chuck, just getting it back into centre, both <laughs> ends. Ben's asking, what's the yellow cabinet for, Mark? The one next to the bench with the unguided grinder wheel. Oh, the bench, shut up. <laughs> Um, oh, so, I swear to God. <laughs> ben, shush. Right. Nothing to see there. Move along. It doesn't, I, I tell you, it doesn't matter where he puts that grinder. He's going to get it in the camera somewhere. Yeah, I know where I am. <laughs> I've just changed my headset over now. And I've got my safety glasses on. Because I've got the bulk of all of this done, I can go back to safety classes so you guys can hear me better. Uh, Charlie Taylor's just come in, and Lewis has as well. How are you doing? Good afternoon. Now, because I've changed everything round, and I've gone to... Well, that doesn't work. Uh, oh, yeah, it does. Um... I've moved it into a chuck, onto a tenon. I've still got the, the tailstock up for support. I've turned the lathe back down to zero. Spun it manually so I know it's all clear. And I can bring the speed back up again now to start throwing a shape on the bottom. Clinton Wood Dancers said, thanks everyone for the warm welcome. Hi. And Robert Klingspoor said, strange that my boss asked for a report today and needed in 10 minutes. And I thought about hollowing out at that particular moment. <laughs> oh, 
How the hell do you pronounce that name? I don't uh, know. Kazaya? Kazaya, that'll do. Yeah. Yeah. L- Lucy, Lucy has said Kazaya likes it every time Fluffy has mentioned. I don't think Mark does, mate. Well, Mark must not get that. Otherwise, he wouldn't have put it in his official address, would he? Well, that's true. No, very true, yeah. Yeah, good call, Pete. Um, Charlie, the wood wood is ash. Well, yeah. We think it's ash, anyway. About that. Doesn't smell like ash. We get a clue and clean the end up. Hodgepodge said, and trust me, Mark knows how to sniff a good ash. <laughs> I thought all the ash jokes got used on my channel. Oh, it got used up, I oh, should say. Well, I'm done subbing in for you. Well, that's yeah, true. this is kind of your so, channel on a, on a loan. So the jokes go with it. Spoiler said, so now when you use sand and sailor and then defluff it, it does take on a whole new meaning. There you go. And there you go, Rob. I was looking forward to you coming here next Thursday. Ben said, can't believe there's another symposium again at $89. I think I might have to skip it. Not heard of that one, but they do seem to be uh, crowding together, don't they? So just a nice, steady, bevel-supported cut. As I come into the bottom, I'm just raising the handle. Just raising the handle slightly so I don't get the wings in the way of the bottom piece. You want to go back on the overhead, Mark? That's better. Gary Grass is nice fluffy shavings there. And Robert King Spore is going to see I think I didn't well notice that Thursday. comment, Pete. Well, it wasn't my comment, it was Gary's. Oh, sorry, I thought you said it. No, Gary said it. Robert said, the key to a nice ash is the curve, Mark. No one wants a flat one. Yeah, nobody wants a flat ash. 
Are you going to send that to, to, uh, to Mark, <laughs> Jimmy? I can do, what's, yeah. What's he done? Just send us a I'm picture of you. you. See, my phone's just gone off. I've got my phone set up so that when Jamie sends me a message, it says, warning, Jamie has sent you a message. <laughs> <laughs> Do not open in public spaces. Yeah. And Gary said, it's nice to watch a pro. I'd have fluffed this up by now. <laughs> Give it time. I might be a professional, but we all know I'm not known for my spindle work. That one's gone. Oh no, going through me gouges. All right, these are all half inches, by the way. Um, a variety of makes, but they're all fresh and sharp. Working. Is that where they get the RPT from? Because wood turners always do, or uh, professional wood turners always do the same stuff. RPT, repeat. It could well be. Oh, Steve Scott's oh, just come in. I missed that. What this end's doing? Lewis is being controversial. It's a lovely foot oh, on this. this. No, there will be no foot on this. So we managed to keep that inclusion in there. So when this gets final finished, don't forget today, this is oh, it's a bit of sporting too. Um, this is just a rough turn. So I'm not going for finishing cuts, I'm just getting shape. Um, when I hollow this out properly at the end, this bit here will hopefully open up. So that'd be nice. It's down inside by about well, down there, it's at least 10 mil in. So I just want yeah. to sort this uh, <clears throat> sort this end out up here. I need to bring the shoulder around a bit more. Right, just to answer Ben, um, I'm still not ready to go back to doing three lives a week, Ben. The workshop is still needing a hell of a lot of work doing to it. That's all the shaving of the floor is soggy, so get trench foot in there three times a week. Ruby's asking, will you put a collar on the top? That's what I'm doing now. I don't think Ruby saw the. Um, no, she came in after. The, after the diagram. It's good to have that, Ruby. So, collar at the top. That's the shape. And don't get don't get too impressed, Ruby. I didn't draw that. I printed that off out of my book. <clears throat> I might just go to three eighths just to do the colour up here.
<laughs> Always worry when you can hear Wayne in the background snort laughing. What now? <laughs> Just another Nothing. gaming message. Nothing. <laughs> You're going to be in tomorrow, in your Mark? Until about four o'clock, yeah. That's all right, then. Oh, why? Why? <laughs> I've now, I've been, turning this, I've been turning this in the chuck for about 10 or 15 minutes. This is a wet piece of wood. We've got it on a tenon. So we're crushing the fibres. Because it's wet... It's a good idea just to go round and give your chuck an extra little tighten because being wet fibers, they will compress. So now I'm getting ready to move the tail stock away. <clears throat> move the elbow stabber right out of the clear that Lewis out. Lewis is discussing whether it was Ruby and apparently it's going to be minus 31C tonight with high winds. That's just ridiculous weather. That's I'm actually going to take I don't want to be in Canada tonight. No. We, were, we, were the having the chat. we were having a chat last night um, and Shug was seeing one of his pals over in, I can't remember whereabouts he is in Canada. They were down at minus 40 odd. That's just like a heat ridiculous wave. temperatures. Yeah, this could be minus 31 tonight for Luke Ruby as well, which is, well, in European standards, pretty much an entire continent further south. Is he in Alberta? I don't know if he's in Alberta. Can you remember where, um, where that guy lives, Jamie? Um, I can't, no. No, neither can I. Ruby's asking about the collar mark. There's a collar there. There, I'm, I'm just squaring the end off because I have a bit of an angle. So I'll play with this in a bit. When I uh, finish getting this square, then I'll put a spindle gouge and I'll put a bit of a bead in there and round it over and as long as you do. Oh, I know. You've been told. I've been told. I was dead. Rob says if you've got that cold at where I live, there's only one result. I would move. <laughs> and Chris has said in Queensland it's twenty nine degrees C at the moment and it's eleven thirty PM. No, it says breathing hurts at minus 25 or 54 years of age. So when are you going to cover that in Joe Sonia paints then, Mark? Probably never. <laughs> but thanks for it's asking definitely, it's definitely not a bit of ash that uh, Wayne would have then
Lucy says it's a balmy 11 degrees today. Where's my... Oh, I'm reading the meat bounce. up. Hidden some bounce through this bit. Because that's where the inclusion is. It's 13 degrees in my workshop. 16 degrees here. In my workshop. But I have just bought a radiator. It's going to get plumbed in soon. <clears throat> My diesel heater's quick down to the minimum, it's 18 degrees in the workshop, so I'm happy. Lucy says, uh, almost thought about wearing shorts. Well, like Daisy Jukes. She is wearing shorts, they just come down to her angles. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make me edit another picture. <laughs> no, don't. There's <laughs> a few little lumps and bumps, but... Yeah, when it's part hollowed and drier, you'll be able to run it a bit faster yeah. as well, so you'll fix yeah. that later on. Lucy says, just do it. Just do this little bit here. Too many pull marks for my liking. Chris Dodds has replied to Lucy saying, is that hot here today? I, I thought of wearing nothing. Right. So, half inch spindle gouge. Now I'm going to use spindle gouge from Ashley Isles. This is quite a long and strong. So it's actually quite a long um, shank, but it's a half inch spindle gouge. And this goes down all the way to this line inside. So it's actually more than a hand's width. Um, and what I'm going to do here is just to keep Ruby happy. Lewis has said, on behalf of all Canadians, thank you, Mark, for not turning you today. Quite all right, Lewis. <laughs> and Robert Klingspore said he wore shorts with his work boots once. His wife was laughing so hard, and then she told him that he looked like a golf club. <laughs> Enchanted Wood Designs has said, a trick to scrape with a gouge. If you hear it squeak, lower the handle and see if it cuts better. Enough. William Kenny's just come in. Hi, William. Hey, William. Hi, William. Start off with 25 millimeter. Go 
go down in stages. So Lucy said, Andy's been messing with her kitchen cupboards and things are up too high. And that's just in the lower cupboards. William likes the shape. Thank you. Bit of a classic. Bit of a classic Greek shape. Not quite, not quite an amphora, but and not quite an urn. I'm not going to do the Greek urn joke. No, it's, not, it's not an amphora, is it an amphiver? Amphiver, <laughs> yeah. Right, so that's... Uh, 25 mil, and I'll go up to... Susie's just come in. Hiya, Susie. Hiya, Hi, Susie. Susie. 28 mil. By going up in stages like this, with less strain on the wood, Less strain on the <coughs> drill bits. <coughs> Just back this back a bit. And you can work your way up through your Fosner bits. Got a second beeswax handy, Mark. Yeah, I have. So I caught him. Paul Finley's just come in. Hey, Dawn. Right, Ben said, I've noticed the turn pieces always look much bigger on the screen. That vase looks fairly big, yet it's not much bigger than the chuck. I can give it's the true, but it is a five-inch chuck. It's eight inches tall and seven inches at its widest. There. there you go. And it's the base, about four inches there. So Stephen, the wood dude, has said, if Mark is down Mr. Fluffy, does this make the earworms the fluffettes? The fluffettes. Obviously, obviously Can he's be. asking for a friend. Makes him the fluffies. And um, Hodgepodge is answering Ben and says, yes, Ben, look how much bigger Mark's head is at this angle. <laughs> oh, not big enough. It's got a bit bigger. There you go, Lucy. No, 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 Sam, beware what you wish for. Oh, no, what's he doing? Let's have a look. Oh, God. <laughs> right, so we're up to 48 millimeter now. And this set of Forstner bits are the ones that Terry from TJ Turnin suggested from Screwfix. Can you get an extension bar for them, Mark? Do you know? Yes. And I do have an extension bar somewhere. Glad you asked about that. I'm glad you brought that up, you know. Really pleased you mentioned the extension bar. That's my bloody extension bar. It's around here somewhere. <clears throat> Enchanted Wood Design says, good to see you hold the uh, Jacob's chuck when you, when you pull it back out. Oh, One yeah, time I forgot, I caught and threw it at him. There is actually a video of Jeff Hornan doing that. Um, with, with a warning that you should always keep your hand on it. 
Ben is disagreeing about the screw fix drills. He says uh, the screw fix ones are made of cheese. He returned his. Oh, yeah. He's saying He's although been... he although he did buy them two years ago, so they may have improved. These, these definitely have got better. Let's go up to the fifty four mil. And William's asking, does screw fix sell the extension bar as well? I believe they actually do, you know. Right, let me just see if I can quickly find the extension bar. Yeah. No. Yes. Look at that. There's no guarantee that... Uh, Mark, we need to see your extension bar and everyone wants to know where it came from. Uh, the, the extension bar came from the shelf over there. There it is. Yeah, but where did you get <laughs> it from? Uh, Amazon. Just Amazon. The only problem is these ones don't go in. So let me find my other portion of bits. I'm just trying to find a force in a bit big enough. That's the thing with extension bars for force in a bit. Yeah, force in a bit take different size extension bars. Different shanks, yeah. Isn't it? yeah. And you do find um, some of the um, force in a bit have hexagonal shanks as well. Well, I find they work quite well with extension bars of uh, roughly the right size because the grub screws have got something to bite into. That's but, true. Uh, Mark Whittingham is asking, what speed is the lathe while drilling? I, I usually keep it to 500. Yeah, I'm running at 680 at the moment. There's a sweet spot, I find. If, if the drill's hard to, to push in, Sometimes a little bit faster, sometimes a little bit slower. But it just needs Huey's to be. Huey's just come in. Huey is in. Hi, Huey. Hello, Huey. Nice to see you, mate. Lewis has said, with the horsepower you've got there, Mark, why don't I just go for a medium hole and then a big one? If any of Huey's workmates are there, hello, Huey's workmates. Huey's um, not a celebrity, he likes to think he is. The reason I'm doing this this way is because I want about an inch on the bottom. So I'm going to mark that there. Um, I'm about to use a tool that's terrifying. So I'm, I want as much clearance as I can have. Chug wants to know if you just skid into that vase. If I just what? Skid into that vase. I guess because of the squeak. Yeah, I guess because of the squeaking right. sound. Chuck says, ask me about his YouTube channel, eh, Jamie? <laughs> Are you in on that as well, were you, Shug? Fine, that's fine. So I know who to blame. I know Jamie's mainly to blame, but... I don't know, Shug's idea. I'm just very influenced, easily. I'm only going in about an inch at a time and backing it out because 
You do not want a force bed on the end of an extension stuck in something this big. No. No. And with it being wet wood, yeah. once you start once you start drilling in and all the fibers start heating up from drilling, they do expand and you yep. drill can get stuck. Yes. Yeah. I do believe uh, Wayne's he, he, he can always drill it out from out. the side in. I do believe Wayne's watched me do that, haven't you? <laughs> I've done it myself on a live. Right. See, this is, the this, is, this, this is the magic of having dust extraction in the shop. You've got dust extraction in the shop, and then you go and spray dust all over the place with an air gun. Yeah, well, I've got me, I've got me dust extractor working above my head, <laughs> which you guys can't see. Just, just there. There's a dust, there's my I've just got a new dust extractor. I've got the Bosch M series. Right. <laughs> so I got a new tool the other week from somebody sold me this second hand and it's fairly impressive. <laughs> Let me look Must at the tip of that, Mark. I saw it's some basic. dude uh, I saw some dude using one of them and he was making cowboy hats. It, yep. Yeah, don't doubt it. It's basically a carbide hook tool. So that, that bit there is the hook in there. But it's got a brass cover, which acts like the bevel. Now, is that carbide or is it high speed steel? Now, I was told it's carbide. Oh, I, I would think more likely high speed steel myself. Oh, I think it'll be high speed steel, to tell you the truth. Okay. Now, Susie's got a um, good question here. How would you get a force bit out of a drilled hole if it does get stuck? Oh, With great difficulty. Great difficulty. You, you, so it might depending how works. stuck it is, depending how stuck it is, you, you usually lose the piece because you have to part down, basically cut it away, and with a gouge cut in until you release. You have to go as far as you can without touching the force a bit. Um, it's horrendous. Don't do it. It's the easiest thing. I was uh, I was quite fortunate. I was able to uh, get in there enough to be able to shake the force in a bit and then loosen off the sawdust and then blow it out with the air compressor. Yeah. And just keep right. doing that. It took ages, but I got eventually got there. Does anybody else in the chat have one of these? I've if got. Do, I've got the smaller one. Right. This is only going to be because we all know I love doing stupid things. It's only going to be the second time I've ever used one of these. Uh, you want to put the camera on side? That one? There you go. Yep, that's good. Now, the trick with these is finding the sweet spot. Benjamin's, uh, Benjamin has answered Susie. If they're screw fixed drill bits, you can pop the piece in the microwave for 30 seconds and they melt like cheese. What's the name of the uh, that lass from Newcastle who does all the tin piece work? You got no name. Oh. Kate there Kitchen. Was always what, no. There was always what, sorry mate. Who does the tin piece work? She works for Axminster. Oh, uh, Helen Bailey. Yeah. Now, That's Helen... Good. Helen uses this tool on all the thin pieces that she turns. She does? I know Phil Irons uses it a lot. <clears throat> promote them. Lewis is saying that is aggressive. You it can, did, um, you can very good. close the cup up if you want to get for a better cut. Yeah, to, there's, um, there's, there's various makes of, of these. Um, again, stuck on a name, the New Zealand guy who developed uh, one. Rolly Monroe. Rolly Monroe. He, he, does a, he does a good one. There used to be one which I don't think you can get now called the Exocet. And 
the good thing about it, seeing how it's got that collar on, you can adjust the thickness of cut. That's that's the size of shaving. Yeah. That comes out of this thing. So they are a bit of a beast. Well, I don't know if I want any of them shavings. Just buy something from Mark's store. I'm sure he'll send you some. <laughs> I used yeah. to have a big brother, which is a similar concept, but it's um, a ring rather than a hook, but with a cap on it. Yes. Um, those shavings are great, unless you've got a narrow opening. With a narrow opening, you can't get those thick shavings out, and then you have to set it down to a fine. Now, Rob's got yeah, a good idea. Makes a nice red, uh, the, the um, makes a nice red shaving. Makes a nice resin blank with them shavings. Well, some people could. As long as they're you dry. Could, you could, Jimmy. I could. If you want to send me them, I will. I'll be getting some more resin soon. Got to make sure they're dry. I'll pack them in the oven. Leave a nice finish. We might, just might. Where's me screwdriver gone? <laughs> Is this wise? I've just Did hidden just Douglas's know? message there, and I didn't mean to. You sent me a message saying you was going to block him. No, I didn't. <laughs> right, I have opened that Sorry. up just a little bit. Um, Douglas has put in there, and I think it got held for review because he mentioned the word Russians, but he said that they use hooks and knives. Now, why is that bouncing? Well, it says usually it's me that blocks Douglas. <laughs> Mark Whittington has said uh, he has two heads for that tool. One point we set to a coarse cut and one point we set to a fine cut. Oh, sorry. It's a pain to get the sweet spot on. It's actually a good suggestion. I didn't hear that. Sorry, say again. Two heads for that tool so you can set one to coarse and one to fine so you don't have to adjust it. Yeah. Once you loosen that screw, it can take you ages to find that right spot. And Brent got the oil patch aggressive at later. I it think my phone's been listening to uh, Ben Jamming. I've just had someone following me on Instagram called Leaning Tower of Cheeser. This <laughs> <laughs> suggest you might want to give that chuck another Titan, Mark. How has it been 15 minutes again? You're just coming up to two o'clock, Mark. Um, not much longer. And you've got 47 in at the moment, according to my YouTube. Oh, thank you very much, everybody. So I'm just putting a Simon Hope handle on here. So if this tool is now, I stand back here. Go on, I'll hop back to where I have to stand. So it's there you go. Yeah, that, that long. So if I put it on the floor, it goes up above Lucy's head. <laughs> yeah, but it does that there. It went, it went above Lucy's head before you put the same and whole panel on. This is very true. All right. Douglas is encouraging people to put the thumbs up because uh, according to mine, there's 47 watts and 25 thumbs up. <laughs> and Robert's asking, 
What do you plan to do to keep your ash crack from showing while it dries? I shall stuff it full of shavings, which I've got a lot of. I might send some to Jamie. And then I'll there put it in a bag. And uh, I'll just put it in a bag, let it air dry. Right, Lewis has said a modified version of that tool with square shank and a low profile screw would be cool. It would, but the other thing you can actually do with this one, Lewis, is that you can actually alter the angle by turning it, by putting it over on its side, so you can actually get a different depth of foot by doing that. It's a sweet spot. Cool. Tell you what, when you find it, don't have to move some wood. And it'll go backwards and forwards in opposite directions as well, so you can push and pull the cut. Lewis is asking, what rough wall thickness are you looking for, Mark? About an inch. Uh, sorry, Ruby is saying, be careful about opening the top too far. I'm just going to uh, put that one aside and just go to my sign up just to. Saying they also make a teardrop scraper head for that tool, which is great for cleaning up the tool marks on the inside. I was very fortunate. I, I got the swan neck uh, end for the, for that tool as well. Um, so I got the the handle, the two ends, um, for more than half price, but they are new. And the Wayne seen the swan neck one. It's still in its packaging. So I was very fortunate. Is it all right to put that uh, right to put that link in, Mark? Yeah, go ahead, Jimmy. Explain about it so people know what's going on. Um, so uh, you you may or may not have heard of a, a guy in the community called Andy Berkey, uh, but you may have seen posts by quite a few people. Um, that's kind of how much he means to the community. So a few days ago, Andy uh, had a, quite a significant fire in his workshop and basically lost everything, including both of his cars as well. Uh, Andy is a massive, massive pillar of the community. Uh, he, and he does church restorations and all that sort of stuff. And his stuff is very, very intricate, which means years of specialised jigs and all sorts that he's had to make. Uh, for the work that he does. Um, and there's been a, obviously a GoFundMe to help Andy because we all know what insurance company um, are like. Um, so if, I'm going to put a link into the GoFundMe. If you're able to help out, please do. 
Um, he's obviously a great friend to the community. Um, yeah, is you know is is what it is. So yeah, if you're able to help out, please do. Yeah, he's he's a great guy, isn't he? Yeah, he, he, helps, is out, he helps out a lot of people whenever he can. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, a prime example of what he's like, multiple people got his logo tattooed on themselves, including myself. going to take this out of the chuck. Uh, and mark the tenon. Uh, Lewis, no. Uh, yeah. Shug doesn't have the the easy wood three pro hollower. I've got one. It belongs to Jamie, but I've got one. <laughs> you got one, two, and three. That's the I've got one, two, and three. Yeah, the pro ones. Put my tail stock back on, so I've got somewhere to sit. Right, so I've marked jaw number one. Okay, jaw number one, and I've marked on the tenon where this has come out, either side of those. There. You know, looking at that now, it doesn't look like ash at all. Do you know, I don't think it is. Smells yeah. like elm, but I don't think it's elm either. Let me change camera. Right, so there's one roughed out vase. It's going to come in a little bit narrower at the bottom, but this is just a rough shape. Um, there's one little crack just there, which I'll treat with um, some super glue. I'll use some O3 black and that's hollowed out inside and that's an inch deep all the way down and I've left an inch at the bottom so that can dry out. Now that is that is actually really wet. If, um, if, if people wanted to get some of that CA glue, is there a promo code they can use? Yes, there is. If you go on to my um, channel down at the bottom of one of my videos, is a promo code of GWT10 and an affiliate link. So if you buy it through the affiliate link, you still get 10% off and I get a little kickback, which helps me out. Uh, so it doesn't cost you anything extra and you actually get discount as well. So that's the vase roughed out. This will probably feeling how wet it is, probably maybe four months. So I'll probably turn this March, April, May, June, June. I'll finish this, but I'll finish it on a live. Um, so that's how you rough out a wet piece of wood. I'm quite happy how that's come out. No, yes. I know it's not a finished project, but, and it does have some burr in it. We were, we were right away. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think it is. You're going to go and whack that in a bag of shavings now. Yeah. Load, fill it with a load of shavings. Put it in a brown paper bag. Leave it for... Change the shavings every three or four weeks. Um, just so they don't go mouldy. 
and then uh, weigh it now and then weigh it every time I shave, change the shavings. And then when it stops losing weight, a bit like me, um, then it's really f finished turning. All right. <laughs> so Susie does a floppy ten Susie. work. Yeah, Susie asked a question about um, will it crack because the bottom is way thicker than the sidewalls? It shouldn't do because, um, well, you're talking about the, the extra depth of this bit. The tenon will move. The tenon will distort. But it shouldn't crack because it's consistently thick from here up. This might move and crack a little bit, but that's why I've made the tenon slightly oversized. So I can put this back on between centers, reshape the tenon and put it back in the chuck. Uh, yes, Douglas, we are both OK at the moment. Thank you. So who's on tonight? Steve's on tonight. Let's go uh, across. There's a possibility it might not be Steve. All right, Steve's okay. work at the moment, so it might be Terry instead of Steve, but we don't know yet. So okay. Hopefully Great you'll one. check the growth and you'll see it. Keep an eye out. It'll be one or the other. <laughs> and tomorrow we've got Jamie and Jake. With Saturday afternoon, uh, Saturday morning, morning Sorry. <laughs> afternoon in the, in the uh, UK, in the afternoon in the UK. Um, and we've got Wayne, you on tomorrow night? I, I think I will be now. It was a bit, um, I've got your computer touch, sorted, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a bit touch and go. I uh, switched my computer on the workshop yesterday, and um, it wouldn't link up to the monitor for some reason. So uh, I asked Dale about that and then went in and fixed it this morning. So at the moment it's working. So yes, okay. I probably will be on tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. And then I'm sure Steve will be back Sunday, one o'clock. Yeah, it should be. And then Monday will be Terry and or Brian. And then uh, Tuesday will be, Tuesday night be me again, uh, because next Wednesday, I won't be able to hear where I'm Wayne because I'm doing a club demo down at uh, Devon Wood Turners. So, but I am going to be here Tuesday night. Uh, just, uh, just real quick about Saturday morning cartoons uh, for the people that's not in the know. Um, we're in the middle of raising money for Make a Wish Foundation at the moment. Um, we're close to hitting seven thousand dollars, and our goal is eight thousand dollars. Brilliant. Um, obviously, we do the, the weekly giveaways as well, and uh, there's usually a discount code lying around if you want um, uh, molds for resin casting and all that kind of stuff. Uh, quite a significant <laughs> discount code as well, and other discount codes obviously lying around uh, if that's something you fancy getting into. So, uh, auctions yeah. and all that kind of stuff all goes to make a wish. Jamie and Jake. Yeah, it's pretty good. Right. I think that's everybody done now, isn't it? I think so. I, yep. I can go to the I can go to the post office now. I've got about twenty parcels over there I need to send out. And don't forget um, that postman would have gone back to the post office and told them all about your new name. Uh, yeah. Everybody in the post office will know you as Mark Fluffy Beckett. Esquire. Fluffy, sir, yeah. uh, sir Mark Fluffy Beckett Esquire. Repeat. Yeah. yeah. Repeat. Repeat, yeah. Repeat. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming in and helping. Thank you everybody for coming. No on. bother. No it. bother. Um, I will dare say I'll see you on the tubes, and I'll see you next week. Take care, everyone. Mm -hmm. Bye. Cheers.